board is now in session. <laughs> okay, first item is approval of the minutes. Does anyone have any comments on the minutes? Do I have a motion? Make a motion. We accept the minutes from the June 18 meeting as submitted. Sorry. All in favor? It's unanimous. Okay, the second item on the agenda is uh, the AT&T at 11 Avon Road site plan amendment. AT&T is requesting site plan amendments to add antennas to the water tower uh, and an, an alternative tower structure located at 11 Avon Road. The application will be reviewed for compliance with section 19-9 site plan regulations. So we'll begin by having the applicant introduce themselves and summarize any changes made to the plans. My name is Ted Small, I'm counsel for AT&T. Kristen LeDuc for SpotLink on behalf of AT&T. Thank you, I'll address the uh, changes to the existing plan. Uh, AT&T's proposal is to install six new wireless antennas they will be behind fiberglass shrouds on the water tank that's presently located on the property. Uh, there will be a new small concrete slab installed. That concrete slab will be eight feet by 17 feet for 136 total square feet. That pad will be used to support an equipment shelter and an AC generator to provide, a, provide backup power supply in the event of a power outage. Um, we did discuss in our, the last time we were here that the generator will only come on to recharge batteries in the event that there's a power outage. Um, the traffic impacts from the additions to the site would uh, be no more than one to two maintenance visits per, per month. So there would be uh, very little to no impact on the uh, infrastructure relating to traffic. Um, to the extent the changes impact erosion controls, an erosion control plan has been provided um, for power to the uh, AT&T equipment. There'll be a new 200 amp electrical service to an existing meter bank. Uh, with regards to sound issues relating to the additional equipment from AT&T, uh, AT&T has proposed uh, installing fencing around the equipment with sound attenuation material on the interior of the fence, uh, that, the fence that'll go around, surround the equipment. Um, had originally proposed that that be a six foot fence, AT&T is now proposing that that be an eight foot fence uh, in order to help reduce sound levels. Um, in addition, at the site visit, there was discussion about the perimeter fence uh, on the corner of the property, and if needed, AT&T would be committed to uh, replacing a portion of that fence to address the sound issues. Um, the sources of noise from the additions to the project would include AT&T's new generator, an air conditioning unit, a, and a direct air cooling unit. Um, in addition to the new fencing, the generator is going to be mounted in a sound attenuating enclosure and fitted with a muffler. Uh, AT&T's consultant believes that this will keep the project in compliance with the ordinance's sound standards. Um, and our understanding is that the consultants do believe that the project will be within the sound limits, not just with respect to AT&T's equipment, but with respect to the cumulative sound. Um, so if AT&T's generator and Verizon's generator are running at the same time, it's believed that it will be within the sound limits. Um, difficulty we have right now is that that's difficult to prove until you actually get the equipment in, installed and operating. But AT&T is committed to doing whatever it needs to, to work with Verizon, to test equipment at the same time, to, to to test the sound levels. Um, and if the currently proposed sound attenuation man, uh, measures were not sufficient, 
they will take additional steps to ensure compliance with the decibel level requirements. Um, I believe that addresses all of the proposed changes. Do you have any additional changes to discuss, Kristen? Well, the changes that we most discussed at the site visit was flopping the, um, where the generator location is to where um, the equipment um, shelter is. So the generator was, um, is now proposed to be put in the back corner of the um, equipment shelter um, concrete pad um, in hopes that, that that will just make a little bit more sound from the property lines. Um, and that's shown on those plans that were submitted and that you have in front of you. Thank you. Are there any really quick questions before I open it to the public? No. Okay. In that case, I'm going to open the meeting uh, to a public hearing. Are there any members of the public here wishing to speak? Come on up. Please state your name. And we typically have a three-minute limit. Okay, I'll try to stay within that. My name is David Bierman. Uh, I'm a medical doctor. Uh, I trained at Oregon Health Sciences University. I also have a PhD in electrical and computer engineering from Cornell University. Um, I'm a resident on uh, Trundy Road, um, which is about a few a couple hundred feet uh, through the trees from this proposed site. Um, I am rising an objection to the, to the placement of the antennas there, at least without some more information. Um, I understand that um, you know, they, they discussed some antennas being there. Um, you know, I, I understand this will probably be radio frequency antennas. I don't know if that's specified. There are other kinds of telecommunication antennas, microwave and other antennas. Um, radio frequency antennas have been considered to be generally safe from a health perspective, but that's not been proven definitively. Uh, there have been studies studying the effects of far field radio frequency radiation on animals that have shown they have, there's, there's a carcinogenic effect. Um, and there are, of course, other kinds of antennas, microwave antennas, which do pose use ionizing radiation, um, which has a, a proven quite direct um, carcinogenic effect. Um, I have two small children. Um, uh, one of them is 20 months old, the other one is four. Um, I, if I had to guess, would there be a negative health effect? My guess would probably be no, but I don't, I, I can't say that with any definitive, definitively, either based on the research or based on my experience as a physician and electrical engineer. Um, so I don't especially want them to be the guinea pigs, nor my neighbors. Um, and so I object to the placement of the antenna there. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Hello, I'm Pavel Darlin. I live at 9 Avon Road, directly abutting the water tower. Um, I thought I'd offer just one simple thought, and it comes out of the site plan, uh, site visit that occurred, and the uh, buffering for the sound. Um, I know that part of the discussion was adding additional fencing conditional upon if there was noise beyond the acceptable limit on the outside of the fencing, closest I believe to my property was what was discussed at the site visit. Um, and I just offer for the board to discuss a, an alternative consideration I think would perhaps be simpler, which is, you know, um, have a condition that tests whether or not the noise, you know, is higher than it needs to be or higher than it should be. If it passes that test, there's no need to consider anything else. But if it fails that test, rather than adding additional structures kind of outside of what is currently, I believe, the footprint of this um, proposal, is to actually you know, add to the sound bufferage within the footprint, so within the enclosure itself, as opposed to adding additional fencing, wooden fencing, it's just gonna start to look a little bit disjointed in my opinion, and it may actually be simpler to try and focus the efforts on getting the sound down within the enclosures itself, as opposed to adding additional materials outside of the existing footprint. So that would just be my suggestion, and I, you know, I thank the board for its consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to come forward and speak? Okay, seeing none, the public hearing is now closed. Um, Maureen, do you want to? Do you want to address the health effects question? Um, I, I'd be happy to share what my understanding is, and I'm looking at the applicant's attorney, and I'm sure he can correct me if I misstate it. But my understanding is, under the federal telecommunications law, 
um, local governments are precluded from looking at health impacts. Um, that, right, that authority is reserved to the federal government, the EPA, FCC. Um, so I, I don't think that's anything the, the local government or this planning board can consider. Yes. I, I was going to essentially say what Maureen just said and that this project complies with federal law and that should end the analysis. Um, to the extent it would be relevant, I, I believe the antennas are of a type. Can you say that there's no help in that? You're going to have to ask them. Sir, I'm going to have to ask you not to speak. Okay. Thank you. Um, I do think there's information regarding the nature of the antennas in the plan, um, but I think you know, I, I think that is beyond the scope. Just so everybody heard that, Mr. Duke said that the antennas fall well within the federal re regulations. Um, and do you want to address the question about adding buffering inside the enclosure for sound? I'm sure AT&T would be fine to committing to take whatever steps it needed to within the footprint, within the existing footprint. Um, that said, I, you know, if if additional measures were needed, and the town looked at it and said, "We know you said you'd, you'd be committed to doing it within the footprint, but we think something else might be appropriate." I just don't want to confine us if the town decides something else might be appropriate. But AT and T is committing committed to doing whatever it needs to do, so that would be fine with us as an approach. Okay. All right. Any, sir, you can You can uh, email the town manager with any comments. I can tell you that we've been down this road a few times, and the planning board is not in a position to discuss the health effects of uh, a tower. We, we can't do it. It's quite simple. Jim? And again, just for the record, Maureen, I know we you discussed it at the last meeting, but if you could, just for the record and for people that here that may not have been here then, about uh, how it's already been litigated to place the towers, or the uh, antennas on the tower. I don't know if you just give a brief summary. Sure, I'll, I'll try to keep it brief. Yes. But I mean, we're working off of 1999 originally, federal legislation when telecommunications really started to blow up and the town adopted regulations. And the town's position was that we wanted to minimize the number of towers throughout the town. So in order to do that, um, you, uh, the town identified two locations that are called overlay districts where commercial towers would be allowed with permits from the planning board. The only other option we allowed was to be able to place an antenna on something like a tall building. And you, that works very well in urban areas, not so well in places like Cape Elizabeth, but we called those tall buildings, alternative tower structures. And the reality is that the water tower is um, qualified as an alternative tower structure. Uh, there was some um, appeals of that determination to the zoning board. It went back and forth in court a couple of times. But the final conclusion that we've worked with is yes, it is an alternative tower structure. And on the basis of that, the planning board granted permission for Verizon to install antennas on that structure. So uh, what you're being asked to do now is pretty close to what you've already granted approval for doing for the Verizon antennas and their ground support equipment. Brief enough? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Uh. Not not having the updated materials till tonight, I know there was some discussion about notes that were supposed to be added to the plan. Have they been added and where would I find them? Save me from searching. The, the only notes that are on there that are reflective of the change made to the equipment um, that are shown on the drawings, um, the notes that were going to be put on the plans would be under a condition 
um, from this meeting that will be put on, you know, within the decision and put on the um, plans that we'll file with the building permit for. Okay. Just a note to whomever's potentially gonna make the motion. Um, the applicant has said they would be upgrading the proposed fencing from six feet to eight feet. Uh, there's two, paint, two plans, C2 and C6B, that talk about six foot tall fencing, so that will also have to be a condition to make those, that fencing go up to eight feet. That is correct, thank you. Okay. I guess if everybody agrees, I have a motion for the board to consider, unless somebody else has some other comments. Did you have a comment, Peter? <clears throat> yeah, just, just a comment. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah, the, um, as Joe noted, we certainly have been down this road before, and, and we have the Verizon uh, installation on the water tower now, and associated with that installation, there has been a I think a significant uh, improvement in the appearance uh, to the neighborhood of the tower. Uh, I appreciate the doctor's concern about the health um, impact and the lack of what I assume you're looking for definitive uh, determinations that there would be none. As, as has been said, the federal law does preempt um, the question. and. The overriding public concern, of course, is to have better telecommunications coverage within the, uh, in Cape Elizabeth, particularly the south half of Cape Elizabeth. So there's a, a public service component to this, and I think all we in the board can say is to the best of our knowledge, and certainly uh, to meet the federal requirements, it appears that the health uh, question is pretty much mooted. Uh, not to discount your concern, but I think we've done all we can on that. Uh, that's right. So uh, anyway, I, I, I appreciate the comment that was made, but I, I do think that the, uh, the concerns are something that we've addressed before we have to live with, and I think the, the public um, interest in improving the telecommunication system in the town of Cape Elizabeth is also important. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay, do we have a motion? Jim. I have a motion for the board to consider. Findings of fact, one, at and is requesting site plan amendments to add antennas to the water tower and an alternative tower structure located at 11 Avon Road, which requires review under section 19-9 site plan regulations. Two. The plan for the development reflects the natural capabilities of the site to support development. Three, access to the development will be on roads with adequate capacity to support the traffic generated by the development. Access into and within the site will be safe. Parking will be provided in accordance with section 19-7-8 off-street parking. Four. The plan does not provide for a system of pedestrian ways within the development because the site is not open to pedestrians due to federal safety rules. Five, the plan does provide for adequate collection and discharge of stormwater. Six, the development will not cause soil erosion based on the erosion control plans submitted by the applicant. Seven, the development site will not be provided with potable water because the use of the site as a telecommun telecommunications facility does not require water. Eight, the development will not be provided sewage disposal because the use of the site as a telecommunications facility does not require sanitary waste disposal. Nine, the development will be provided with access to electrical utilities. Uh, Ten, the, uh, the development will not locate, store, or discharge materials harmful to surface or ground waters. Eleven, the development will not provide for on-site disposal of solid waste because the use of the site as a telecommunications facility does not require solid waste storage as any waste generated, generated will be immediately removed from the site. Twelve, 
The development will not adversely affect the water quality or shoreline of any adjacent water body. 13. The applicant has demonstrated adequate technical and financial capability to complete the project. 14. The development will not provide for adequate exterior lighting without uh, excessive illumination. Is that, is that right? The development will provide for adequate, well, yeah, they're not adding any lights on this, correct? Yes. Correct. Will there be adequate lighting on the site as proposed? Yeah, okay, the development will provide for adequate exterior lighting without excessive illumination. Development will provide a vegetative buffer. No, it should put in a fence, or right? yes. But, but outside the fence, it's totally vegetative. Okay. Vegetative. Yeah. The development will provide a vegetative buffer throughout and around the site, and screening is needed. The development will, uh, I guess, is yet to be seen uh, about increasing noise levels and cause human discomfort. I mean, how do we want to... you read it as is and then we can amend it okay. or discuss it? The development will not substantially increase noise levels and cause human discomfort. The use of shrouds and color-coordinated cabling uh, conceals the antenna. The, develop the applicant will not... Uh, obstruct co-location by other providers subject to adding a note to plan C1 as required by this pro approval. The proposed antennas will blend into the surrounding environment through the use of color and camouflaging architectural treatment. 20, the existing vegetation will provide a buffer and minimize visual impact. 21, the new antennas and ground supporting pad and equipment are designed in conformance with structural standards. 22, the facility is surrounded by an eight foot high fence that provides adequate security. 23, no advertising is proposed on the site. 24, based on a license issued by the Federal Communications Commission, the FCC, the equipment will not interfere with existing telecommun telecommunication within the service area. Um, and I want to modify the wording on 25 just a bit. The applicant has agreed to remove equipment after 12 months of cessation of use. Does that, is it's it, it's fine? Okay. The applicant shall be required to post a performance guarantee for the proposed improvements on the site. 27, the planning board conducted a site walk at 11 Avon Road on Monday, June 24th, 2019, beginning at 5.30 p.m. 28, the application substantially complies with section 19-9 site plan regulations and section 19-8-12 tower and antenna performance standards. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of AT&T to add antennas to the water tower and alternative tower structure located at 11 Avon Road be approved subject to the following conditions. That the applicant install a eight foot high solid wood fence located from, from the northerly termination of the split rail fence to the northeast corner of the chain link fence if the combined noise level for all generators on the site, should I have said five foot six? Yes. Okay, I get that mixed up with the other fence, eight foot. Back to number one, the applicants install a five foot six high solid wood fence located from the northerly termination of the split rail fence to the northeast corner of the chain link fence if the combined noise level for all generators on the site exceed 45 dBH between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. or 55 dBH between 7 a.m. and 10 p.m. at the property line. The plans shall be amended to show the location of the fence and labeled optional as defined above. Two, that the dead tree adjacent to the access drive be replaced with a new evergreen tree. Three, that a note be added to the site plan C1 that the applicant will not interfere 
with the co uh, co-location opportunities of other providers in accordance with FCC regulations. Four, that a note be added to the site plan that all equipment will be removed after 12 months of cessation of use and that a performance guarantee be provided to cover the costs of removal. Five, that there be no issuance of a building permit or alteration of the site until the plans have been revised to satisfy the above conditions and submitted to the town planner. Second. Great, okay. Um, I have a friendly amendment on 16. And... What'd I say? Yeah, that's the one uh, yeah. about substantially increasing noise levels. So I thought we could have it read, under normal conditions where electrical power is available, the development will not substantially increase noise levels and cause human discomfort. Because we pretty much know that at this yeah. point. I can agree to that. I agree to that. Okay. And then, uh, I don't know, how do you guys feel about number one there? It seems like... Of the conditions or...? Of the uh, right. conditions, yes. Um, I guess it, it depends. It seems that we right. want to make, we want them to do whatever me measures are right. necessary to reach the required DBH level. And I don't think it quite says that. I, I personally like the looking at the fencing of the entire enclosure. I mean, maybe that fencing should be more robust than a chain link fence. I don't know. I, that's just a thought. In, in terms of the site plan or in terms, in terms of, of addressing, addressing the potentially sound. the sound? I kind of agree with what one of our citizens said, that doing it within the enclosure in some way rather than outside the enclosure might be an option that is certainly worth looking into. Yeah, Julie, I think, I think the gentleman's point who spoke second was that he would like to see the, the interior, the structure which already has baffling perhaps be enhanced if the noise is excessive, and that would be the first recourse. And then the second recourse would be perhaps to the existing fencing, which makes a lot of sense perhaps roofing it or putting on a, a more robust sound dampening system. And, I, that's, and apparently the applicant is happy to address the enclosure first and then the, uh, the, the, the equipment enclosure first and then the chain link fence enclosure second, which makes a lot of sense to me. Okay, yeah, I agree. Is everybody kind of on board with that? Yeah, I don't know how to put it into yeah, this. Who wants the wordsmith? <laughs> I think Elaine's at home. <laughs> um, well, I, I guess we're saying um, the applicant. Hold on, Maureen's working. Okay. I mean, it's it's offering options to try and get to the same result. So maybe everybody should write one, and then we can read them. <laughs> And then do we grade them? Okay, revise number one, that the ground equipment enclosure fence be increased to eight feet in height and that the noise dampening be increased inside the equipment enclosure to meet the DBH levels. Do you want to say the equipment enclosure or the inside the fencing 
enclosure. I mean, the equipment enclosure is they're already putting a box on it, right? And you can put a thicker box, but it's not going to make a big difference in, based on my experience doing the calculations. But go ahead. I think you just want to make a distinction between the, the chain link fence, which is really the enclosure. Yeah. That's the fencing of the site. Is that what you're calling the equipment? I'm, I'm calling the equipment enclosure being the eight foot tall fence that is going on the 136 square foot concrete pad for AT&T. Okay. Because to me, the equipment enclosure is the sheet metal, insulated sheet metal box they're putting around a generator, which so is different things. Maybe so instead of equipment enclosure, it should be the, the, the fencing on the concrete the, uh, pad. tall wood fence with sound attenuating blankets since they already right. referred to it that way. Okay, the, the uh, ground equipment enclosure fence be increased to eight feet in height and the noise dampening be increased inside the um, eight foot wood, wooden fence. Uh, the sound attenuating. The sound attenuating enclosure yeah. to meet the DBH levels. It's just, I don't want to call it an equipment enclosure because that's technically not it. So, I don't know, Hiromi, you got it? I think so. <laughs> I'm not sure. Well, I'm not sure we got it. Um, well, <laughs> I, 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 Is that the whole? The, the fence that's going around the concrete pad, right? That's what we're talking about, right? I, there were two things I tried to deal with. So okay. you're, you're totally eliminating the first proposed condition number one and replacing it with a different condition that right. says that the six foot high wooden fence that's currently proposed is going to be increased eight foot high. Right. And that fence goes around the concrete pad. Right. And that additional sound attenuation material will be proposed inside that wooden fence right. to get you to the de the maximum decibel I thought levels. it was inside the chain link fence. No, that, that's the second item. If, if the, that's the second if the baffling item. within the eight foot fence doesn't work, then what's described here, number one, is that solid fence going on the, the line of sight between the box and the neighbor's house. I th and that would be the second step if the first step isn't sufficient, okay. I believe. Well, that's certainly an option, um, and I may not have remembered the site walk conclusions as well as you do, because I remember us being outside the eight-foot high fence yeah. and talking, second? yeah, the second fence, and it was supposed to be on the outside of the eight-foot high fence, and it was going to be a couple of sections of fence that started from the split rail fence and intersected with the corner right. of the chain link fence, and that's what's described in number one here. Right. But then I heard but, but, but a preference. What, what we heard tonight was a suggestion that another option could be to do something with the chain link fence so it still remains within the enclosure. The kind of things that we were throwing out at that was like one panel here, that's not gonna cut it, that's not gonna work. But um, there could be other things that they could do within the chain link fence itself that could do something before they go to step three or option two or whatever you wanna call it of putting up a whole new wooden fence along along the um, abutters property line. So 1A is to increase the height of the existing of the, the existing fence. The existing fence in the, in the, in the on the pad to from 6 to 8 feet which right. they've already agreed to actually. Right. Then the 21A1B would be to do some sort of sound attenuation with the existing um, fence around the entire enclosure. That's what you're saying? Right. And, that makes sense. And I'm, I'm thinking you're, you're going to increase the fence height to eight feet and then based on what you measure at the property line, then you're going to take additional steps, but the preference is to take those additional steps inside or at the perimeter of the concrete pad. Is that? No. No. Inside the perimeter inside of the, the chain link okay. fence. Wait, okay. Which, all right. Okay. Yes, that's what I'm getting at. Okay. 
So I guess we're saying the same thing different ways. That's the water tower photo. That, that might be a better appropriate term for that versus the equipment enclosure, which would include yeah. the concrete. Okay, so 1A, that the... Have you eliminated one complete? Yeah, eliminated... Uh, eliminate one. Let me re restate what number one. That the fence height around the concrete, the new concrete pad be increased to eight feet, period. After sound testing at the property line, comma, if, I'm, I'm talking punctuation. After sound testing at the property line, um, if the sound level does not meet town ordinance criteria, then additional sound attenuation steps will be taken inside the chain link, existing chain link fence. Does that sound right? I got it. Peter, does that sound right to you based on what we've been saying? Well, not entirely, but it's close enough. I mean, I, to, to me, there, it's kind of a three-step process. They, they take the height to eight feet. If it doesn't work, perhaps they can increase the baffling within the eight-foot fence, perhaps even putting a ceiling panel on, I don't know. And then if that doesn't work, then we get into the business of over the chain link fence in that corner. <coughs> Perfect. And in the in the site walk, we had quite a bit of discussion about well, how many panels would you have to put up to do any good, and it would look yeah. kind of weird if you didn't do the whole thing. And I think we were sort of seeing that as not perhaps a terribly effective way to baffle it. So I, I, I like the second gentleman's you know, concept. Let's work first within the eight-foot structure. And if that doesn't work, if, if we can't enhance the sound baffling within the... So I guess the third part of number one... That wasn't me. I didn't do it. Third, <laughs> the third part of number one would then be if that, these, if the steps taken um, to, to then, uh, the steps taken up to then to still not satisfy the sound levels, then steps exterior to the chain link fence are possible, or yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, let me paraphrase it. The, yeah. If, the, if the, um, the combined operation of the, the equipment on site exceeds the town ordinances uh, for, noise, uh, for yeah. noise, then the applicant will first endeavor to Increase the sound baffling mm -hmm. within the eight foot fence. Right. Okay, which eight foot fence? The one around the concrete path. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I think including perhaps a, an overhead, I've always wondered why that wouldn't help. Um, well, it, it just based on experience, it's going to bounce off of that roof and then go somewhere else Rather instead of going up straight up. No, no, don't you normally have some sound absorbing materials on the roof? Uh, what? Yeah. And then, uh, if, if that is not sufficient, then the applicant will uh, will address further sound baffling on the chain link fence on right. the corner, right. uh, adjacent to the neighbor's house. Yeah, I, yeah, that's what I meant. If uh, that's what I wanted to say, if I didn't say that, but okay, okay. And Joe's got it all down perfectly, I can have, tell. Have we, have we beaten this into the ground yet? Yeah, but <laughs> just about. How are you doing there? I think I got it, but. Uh, so, eight, six feet to eight feet. You're right. Wood fence. Second, sound attenuation or baffling material inside the eight foot wood fence. Yeah. That doesn't work. Sound attenuation outside the eight foot chain link fence. Right. Right. It's four items, right? Yeah. I skipped 1A because we were already there. Okay. Should we read that one? I think we did, didn't we? <laughs> All right. Good enough. 
we can wordsmith more. So we're both okay with that, we're, right? Yeah. <laughs> everyone's okay. All right. Yes. Um, can we move on to yes. the one? All right. All right. So any other comments on the... That, that was me trying to move on. I have actually one friendly amendment. This is very simple. Uh, number two of the what amendment amended pieces, it uh, references the, that the dead tree adjacent to the access drive be replaced with a new evergreen tree. I just wanted it to be more specific to say that the dead tree adjacent to the access drive be replaced with a new tree of the same species and comparable size. So that's very... We're basically just replacing what was there. Evergreen's a little too broad, and then you could put in like a four-inch, like you know, Christmas tree, uh, in, with in that wording. So, I can that. good with me. Great. Okay. Anything else? You're right. That wasn't easy. One. <laughs> Told you. Yes. All in favor? All opposed? It's unanimous. Motion passes. Okay, other business, the, uh, I'm gonna open the hearing for public comment on any issues the public wishes to speak on. Are there any members of the public who wish to speak on any issues here? Okay, seeing none, the public comment period is closed. Uh, we need a motion to adjourn and um, are we gonna meet here in the... Uh, I would recommend that you open your, your workshop in the Jordan Conference Room. Okay. Make a motion to adjourn to the Jordan Conference Room for our workshop. Do you have a second? A second. All in favor? It's unanimous. Okay. We'll continue with a workshop meeting in the Jordan Room in the back of us.